Hello. So talking to people a little bit recently, there seems to be quite a few people out there that would like to take part in group flights in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but don't really know where to get started. So I thought we might spend five or 10 minutes just looking through kind of the, the things you need to check and how to get started with taking part in group flights. So the first thing you need to do in the simulator once you've got it up and running is go to the options page. This is just some things to double check. Go to the general options go to the data section and make sure that multiplayer is on yeah if you haven't got multiplayer on you won't see other human aircraft in the simulator okay so that's the the first thing to check the next thing to check is when you go into setting a flight up within you know where you set your destination at the top right you've got flight conditions so before you go into the flight you need to go into flight conditions this is where you would normally set air traffic and weather and time. So I always leave mine on live here. But the important one is multiplayer has to be on all players. Don't use live or group only. Yeah, leave it on all players. Okay, so once you've done that, when you go into a session, you will be able to see other humans. The only other thing to check is when you click on your name at the top right of the flight simulator menu pages, you'll see it's got your online status, but underneath that it's got the server you are connected to. Now, it may be, if you've never meddled with it, that it's on automatic, but you need to go and choose the server yourself, really. So you need to pick the same server as the other people you want to fly with. You can only see each other if you are on the same server as each other. So typically for virtual flight online, we use Southeast Asia purely because it's a little bit quieter so you don't get the problems associated with hundreds or thousands of aircraft in the same locations. Okay, so you pick your server and then you can just click away from there and you are on that server. Yeah, you don't have to save or say OK anywhere. You just drop down the menu, pick the server and then click away from it. Okay, so that solves being in the simulator and seeing other people. How do we get to find out about where events are happening and um, talking to each other and seeing each other's screens, perhaps even? So if we go to the Virtual Flight Online website, there is a section on here for group flights. And our group flights at Virtual Flight Online are organized in the Discord application. Discord is a kind of a forum voice chat and screen sharing application that's free and it's designed specifically for people playing games. So if we go and scroll down looking at the, um, the group flight information you see there's a button here to join the Discord server. If you go and read the Discord page it tells you a bit more about Discord itself and what it is, where to install it from. So it's a, a Windows application, you can also get a mobile application of it. But the most important thing, once you've got an account, a free account at Discord, is you need to join the server. So the Discord servers are invitation only. So a joining button is actually an invitation. So when you click on the join button, it will walk you through joining the server. So you have to have your Discord account first and have Discord installed. When you first install Discord, it won't have any servers installed or won't have any servers set up on it. What I mean by that, if we go and look at Discord, so this is Discord. On the very far left margin of Discord, when you first start out, there will be nothing in there other than a plus button and a compass button. Another way of joining the virtual flight server is if you click on the compass and you type in virtual flight uh, dot online, there we are. Yeah. And that, that will join you into our server. It will ask you a couple of questions about do you agree with the rules, about the typical things, you know, no hate speech and the rest of it. But then once you are in, you can go and take part in any of the channels in the server. So when you click on a server, once you've joined the server, you will get the, the yellow aeroplane on a blue background on the far left, meaning that that's our server. So when you click on it and you get the white bar next to it, the, the rest of the screen will reflect that server. Yeah. So then these are the channels within the server. So then we can click on general and see general voice chat. We can go into the forum and we can look at discussions on specific subjects. 
we can go into the support channel and see people solving problems together. We can see introductions of people that have joined the server telling us a little bit about themselves. We've got screenshots and so on and so forth. But for a group flight, we're really more interested in right at the top, there's an event coming up. So anybody can make events. We've got full guides on how to do it. So when you click on event, it says there's one event and here it is. There's a, an event coming up on um, Sunday, the 15th of January at 8 p.m. or 20 hundred hours GMT. If we can click on it, we can read all about the event and we can see, you know, where, when, where to spawn into. And we can say that we are interested in it, for example, and that will tell the person who's organized the event if they've got much of a um, much of an audience. And yes, they've got lots of people that are interested already. So if you wanted to post some more about an event or see more about it, we have an events info channel as well, which is just a forum, really. But it allows you to, to post more than an event would. So you could go and look in here on the same event. And you can see the same details again but there may be a whole conversation going on about you know um, any special scenery that people might like to in install or uh, the flight plan or things like that the more important thing about discord are the voice channels so on the left hand side you can see in the virtual flight online server we've got several voice channels we use the events voice channel for events so if i want to take part in a voice channel all i do is click on it and i'm suddenly logged into that voice channel yeah i can mute my microphone so nobody can hear me but at the moment nobody can hear me i've got push to talk switched on which is enforced in here and i'll show you it in a moment but if i were to go into chat then i could chat to anybody in that channel you could have different people in different channels and you just click on the channels to jump from channel to channel to talk to them yeah the important thing is I can actually share my screen as well. So while I'm in a voice channel, I can click on the button down here next to Flight Simulator because it's running. It gives me some options about the quality of the stream I wish to make, and I can say go live. And you can see suddenly there's my screen and that's what I'm broadcasting. If I click on the chat channel itself, you can see you could see everybody's screen that might be sharing all at once. So you can all see each other's screens, or potentially if you share then other people can see your screen. So it becomes wonderful for teaching, yeah, and for, so for problem solving. So if I want to stop streaming my screen, I just click the X next to Flight Simulator. And if I want to leave the voice channel completely, I can just disconnect at the bottom left. So to configure the audio to work, so my microphone and speakers work as I would imagine for the voice channels, when you are in Discord, there's a cog next to your name at the bottom left. If you click on that cog, about halfway down the left hand side, there's voice and video. In there, you can choose your input device. So I've got my uh, USB microphone at the moment. And then you've got your output device. So you can obviously you can choose the speakers or a headset, whatever you're choosing to use. And obviously you can then go test it. And here's the important bit. You can set up to be working in voice activity mode. In other words, Discord is going to realize when you are talking and broadcast it or push to talk. Now, different voice channels can be configured to allow voice activity or not. The events channel in Virtual Flight Online forces push to talk. So you have to come in here and turn it on. Yeah. So let's just go back in there and see how you configure that. So if we go to voice and video, and I click on, when I was on voice activity, there were no options. You can, it's just automatic look, automatically determine input. So in other words, it realizes when I'm talking and starts broadcasting. See, it goes green when I'm talking. If you have push to talk, you have to select a button or a key that will be the one you use. So if I click that again, it's waiting for me to press something. If I press the control key again, there we go. So when I hold control on now, if I hold control on, let's go back out of here so you can see it happen. So you can see if I join a channel, at the moment I'm not broadcasting. If I hold control on, it goes green around me, which means I'm broadcasting. If I let go of control, there's no longer green around me. Okay, so on, off, on, off. The reason to have push to talk is for safeguarding reasons. 
we had several cases we used to use voice activity then we had several cases where we heard things in the background that we shouldn't have or people just didn't realize that the background sound in their room was being broadcast over their microphone so to make it better for everybody for events we use push to talk so we've had a look at discord and we've had a look at the website uh, where you can go to find out about group flights and where the information is and we've had a look at the simulator and that's really all there is to it so all a group flight relies upon is a group of people meeting up in the simulator world at the same time and the same place as each other and having a means of talking to each other which we do through discord that's really all there is to it so hopefully that's helpful if you've never done it before so remember make sure your settings are correct in the sim make sure you're on the same server as the people you're going to be flying with and then go and check in the events in virtual flight online and you can find an upcoming event and if you want to do your own event there's nothing to stop you doing that once you are a member of the server you can come in and you can create an event and you'll say it's going to be in a voice channel for example it's going to be in the events channel you can give it a name give it a description a date and a time upload a picture and you're good so anybody can create an event yeah you might want to make it for though a couple of days in advance at least to drum up some interest and do a little bit of marketing of it maybe post in um, the general channel saying you're setting an event up would anybody be interested but other than that yeah you should be good to go anyway that's probably enough for today um, we'll come back and look in oh one last thing to to finish on if you look in the group flight page on virtual flight online so if we go back to the front page go to group flights if we scroll down there is a guide here to how to arrange group flights how to create it in discord how to create a thread in the events info channel in discord um, and some example text for an event to cover off all the bases of things you might want to tell people okay right i'm going to leave it there and we'll look forward to seeing you on a group flight soon okay take care